Hello students. So today we will talk about liquidity adjustment facility, the LAF facility, which is as a monetary policies quantitative tool. So we have already covered one, in one of our lecture about the CR and SLR. Let's understand the LAF facility. Now there are two types of LAF market. One is the overnight market. One is the term repo term market. Now overnight as name is implying here that overnight market is where the lending and borrowing is happening for one day period. Okay, so that is your overnight overnight market, overnight repo market. Now what is the repo market? I'll just explain it uh, uh, in a moment. So here you should understand there are two types of uh, LAF window. One is the overnight window, one is the term window. Okay, so overnight is for basically for one day and term is basically for 7, 14, 7, 27, 28 days. Now the here what is happened into the uh, LAF facility actually that bank borrow from the RBI okay and uh, they can also park their money with the RBI for that some interest rate need to be uh, interest need to be provided by the RBI or to the RBI depending upon what type of facility they are using okay so now that interest rate is decided on an overnight market by the policy rate which is announcement of the MPC policies whereas in the term repo rate the interest rate is decided by an auction mechanism okay so let's understand first let's understand the how the repo market works okay so what is the repo market so left purpose is basically uh, liquidity management as the name is liquidity adjustment facility where the if bank is having excess cash then they they park that excess cash with the rb against that rb will give them some interest rate and in case bank is having uh, in the uh, deficiency of the cash they don't have an enough uh, don't have enough cash and they require much more cash in that case they can rb they can ask rbi they can ask man, uh, ask the money from the rbi and return of that bank has to pay some interest to the rbi okay so that is the purpose of the lab liquid resistance facility now here and the purpose of the life is to develop the interbank term market term money market how this happen then the repo market basically it's the bank and rp who are playing that is on one side you are having the commercial bank and on the other side you are having the uh, rbi but it become this uh, interaction between the rbi and the banks it uh, help in development of the interbank term money market okay basically in, in development interbank basically where the uh, on both of the side of the transaction uh, your bank would be there for example SPA would be dealing with the I say that in a way repo market provide a platform forum over which that interbank market develops okay so now uh, and uh, they decide the market benchmark rate and market benchmark rate is decided for example if one bank is borrowing from the another bank for X amount uh, for 10 percent of interest rate then that interest rate will become a benchmark rate and now whatever the money will be lent by the bank to some person for some industry or some uh, uh, person for buying the house and the thing they will always charge uh, that uh, interest rate over and above this market benchmark rate okay so now benchmark market benchmark rate in a way is deciding the how much interest rate i will get in case i borrow the money from the bank okay so now this is decided in turn decided by the repo market and repo market is nothing but where the interest rate is decided by the rbi okay so here you can see that how the monetary policy transmission is happening uh, from the repo market to towards the uh, final interest rate so this we will talk about in one of the video that is uh, there is a still concern of monetary policy in the transmission that we will talk about in detail in one of our video so now so it has been written that uh, to help develop the interbank market, set market based benchmark for pricing of loan and deposits and improve the transmission of the monetary policy, which I already explained you. Now, LAF window, there are two types of things. One is the repo rate, one is the reverse repo market. Now, what is the difference between reverse repo and repo? Let's understand that thing. So, rather than reading it, we can do it uh, over this here. Although, one, one more thing is here, this is uh, written wrongly. Now, it's no more 50 basis points, so 25 basis points. So, now let's understand repo receipt purchase obligation repurchase agreement repo market now here what happens actually rbi and uh, banks or other market allowed uh, market uh, participants like your uh, uh, your primary uh, dealers also participate into this market so here what happens actually that your uh, banks we will take the example of bank banks take the money lend take, borrow the money from the rbi Okay, so borrow the money from the way, but in they need to put something as a collateral and this is a government security which is put as a collateral to the bank. Okay, so this is what happened in the case that is money will go from RBI to the banks and bank will put some government security as a collateral to the RBI uh, and against that collateral only they are getting the money at the rate of repo interest rate. But what is the cash here that is under the repo market bank is 
collateralizing the government security they have to collateralize the government security within repurchase agreement repurchase obligation that obligation that means after some time whatever the some time would be that after some time that government security need to be repurchased by the bank okay after a predetermined rate or date okay this is what is the repo market okay so where the government security has been put as a collateral but with an obligation to buy back those government security okay so now but can bank uh, borrow unlimited amount of money under the life window no they cannot borrow unlimited amount of money there is a uh, limit on the amount of money which can bank can borrow from the rbi and uh, that limit is under the term repo market is a 0.5 percent of NDDT allow for bank this much of money only bank can borrow from the rbi through life window okay so another case is this is one thing another restriction is that this government security which they are putting as a collateral that government security cannot be out of the your uh, sla requirement statutory liquidity ratio requirement okay so centralized government security cannot be from the sl requirement let's take in this example okay so let's say sl requirement is 20 percent and ndtl is uh, 100 in that case let's assume that bank is keep maintaining its sl requirement full sl requirement by investment into the government security that 20 rupees of a government security has been bought by the bank although it should be understood that it's not uh, that uh, all the uh, sl requirement are met out only by the only by buying the government security you uh, by investing into the government security bank can meet their sl requirement by having the cash by having the gold as well but let's say in this case bank is maintaining all of its sl requirement by having the security by investing into the government security now bank cannot put this 20 rupees or 20 whatever the security amount is this much of a security for the collateral to get the money under the repo market okay so this need to be understood that is uh, government cannot borrow the 20 crore rupees of they cannot borrow the money from the rbi by collateralizing that security which is collateralizing the debt security which is a part of your uh, slrs okay so now in case bank require further money what the bank will do one thing bank can do bank, there is an msf facility we just going to study after uh, understanding the reverse repo rate so msf is nothing but it's an uh, another window which is provided by the RBA to get the extra fund in case they are not uh, able to um, finance able to finance their uh, old requirement bank is not able to get the enough money now that will study about the MSF in case MSF also fill out then bank borrow from the other banks okay so let's understand uh, before going to the MSF facility let's understand the reverse repo concept what is the reverse repo okay so now present repo rate is expressed this may be changed when you are watching this video that may happen that it, it may have been changed so that you can check on the rb website what is the present repo rate the reverse repo is exactly opposite okay so here i have written that is inject the equity uh, that you can understand how it is injecting the liquidity because money is going under the repo money is going into the banks and what the bank will do with that money they will lend the money to the people so in a way liquidity is injected that is money is injected into the system by the repo market now next is reverse repo exactly opposite of repo is reverse repo under which bank park their extra money with an rbi okay by and at the interest rate of uh, uh, reverse repo which is uh, decided by the rbi and its monetary policy and but when they're parking their money with the rbi rbi will give them the government security but with an repurchase agreement that is again rbi at what, whatever the predetermined rate or predetermined date at that time or date rbi will buy back those securities from the bank or it, that security will goes about goes back to the rbi and rbi will give the money okay so this is what is happening to the reverse repo market okay now repo rate is always greater than reverse repo market so presently or it may change when you are seeing this video so it is a generally it would be reverse repo would always be less than repo market now that you can understand why this is a logic in case let's say uh, repo rate is less than reverse repo okay so what would happen so there is a bank what he will do he will borrow the money from the rbi at the rate of let's say re reverse repo is a five percent and repo is four percent. has been this is the case although this would never be a case where the repo is less than reverse repo but let's say just to illustrate let's say repo is less than reverse repo so what the banks will do bank will again uh, borrow the money from the rbi at the rate of four percent interest rate and lend the money to the rbi at the rate of c five percent okay so this is an uh, arbitrage type of situation where which would not happen okay so uh, that's why repo will always be greater than reverse repo presently there was a difference of 50 basis point between the repo and reverse repo now uh, 
previously it was the 50 basis point presently it's now 25 basis point that is rapid point reverse apple uh, bin window is 25 basis point now let's understand now msf category under the msf category there is margining standing facility which is opened uh, many times but it's not a continuous type of process where the bank can borrow money from the central bank that is your rbi over and about what is available to them through the life window through the life window you understand there's a limit on the bank okay now here bank can borrow from the from their msf uh, through the msf window and even they can dip into their statutory liquidity ratio portfolio up to a limit of two percent of NDA. what does that mean that is they can uh, collateralize the government security which they are keeping for meeting their uh, SLR requirement but they, it's not that they can keep all of their uh, SLR government security to the uh, uh, to, co they collateralize all of the uh, government security which is for the SLR for getting the fund from the RBA there is only maximum 2% 2% of their end detail they can borrow okay so again this 2% can be very much very wide with the RBA circular so now let's see this so we have understood what the money will go from the RBA to the bank at the MSF rate and the government security will be uh, given to the RBA as a collateral. Now here, what is the difference between here and within this repo and MSF? This is the difference can be illustrated with this example. Let's say SLR requirement is 20%. Again, we are saying that all of the SLR requirement is, is uh, kept by the bank by doing the investment into the government security. Now, now, okay, let me, okay, so now, can put some security then that as a out, out of SL requirement he can put rupees to that is two percent out of the above rupees 20 as a collateral to get the money under the msf okay so that is uh two percent of NDTL, which is a two rupees that is he can put two rupees as in co as in collateral to the rba to get the money that they are bridging in their sl requirement again but here they have to pay a more interest rate rather than just uh, that repo rate that is they have to pay more interest rate over and above their repo rate okay so now they are permitted to borrow only a certain percentage of NDDTL and collateralized government security can be from the SLR requirement. It's a two, presently it's a 2% of NDDTL. It may change with uh, RBI notification. Now, so we have seen MSF rate. Now, present MSF rate is 6.25. We have seen repo rate, which is a 6%, and uh, reverse repo rate 5.7. This is our rate when I'm making this video. So, it may be changed when you are watching this video. So, what I want to say here that is, difference between MSF rate and reverse repo rate is called your policy corridor that is policy rate would be between msf and reverse uh, repo which is policy corridor of 0 0.50 percent and this is called rep difference between repo and reverse repo is called the left corridor liquidity adjustment facility corridor which is a 25 0.25 percentage or it can be said as a 25 basis point so this is a policy corridor now uh, when we are discussing this uh, rate so let's uh, look one more thing about the bank rates okay so bank rate although they have, don't have any much relevance now and you will always see that bank rate will always be equal to msf rate now the only way the bank rate is used nowadays to calculate the penalty earlier earlier bank rate was very important earlier that is prior to the introduction of a left window okay liquid assessment facility so prior to that whenever bank need to uh, buy or need to lend from the reserve bank they this is bank rate become a rate at which they can uh, uh, buy, they can uh, borrow from the rbi so this type of this is a, although it's not a direct borrowing it's a discounting of bills of exchange or commercial papers so this instrument will uh, study that is uh, bills of exchange your commercial papers all of this in instrument will study into the financial market but for timing you can take it like um, uh, this rate was used utilized earlier to borrow from the rba now introduction of life has uh, removed this requirement now there is no more bank rate is used for this type of purpose now bank rate is only used for calculating the penalty which you must you must have observed when we are discussing about the crr slr requirement if bank is not maintaining crr slr thing then they have to pay the interest penal interest of bank rate plus uh, uh, three percent okay so type of penal interest they have to pay so these are the uh, use of bank rate asset bank rate is not uh, very much used and always uh, bank rate is uh, for the last few years bank rate is always equal to the msf rate it is aligned to the msf rate so now we have covered the left window now so one thing you should understand how through the left window money supply is controlled so if bank oh sorry rb increase their repo rate then you can see that interest rate which would be uh, 
which is an cost for a bank so interest rate will also increase for the bank and bank will also charge more interest rate from the borrowers so now what would happen actually in this case bank will not be very much happy uh, sorry bank will charge more interest rate so borrower will not be very much happy to borrow from the bank and your credit cycle will not be that much of a frequent which was uh, in the case when the interest rate was low so through changing the interest rate bank is also sorry uh, your uh, by changing the interest rate uh, money supply is also getting affected because that actually uh, RBI is not injecting any money or not taking out any money from the system but it is affecting the credit cycle okay because now loan of dem demand for loans will be less if RBI increase their uh, policy rate okay so this is how the money supply would be affected by the left window okay, so in the next we will try to understand the open market operations